Okay, this is part two of cocaine cops and chunky cheese. So, to recap briefly, we have a uh, defendant, a person who went, well, this defendant got arrested, uh, went to a hotel, a young lady exits her from his vehicle with a suitcase, it came in the trunk, and she gets arrested, he gets arrested as he leaves the property, she gets arrested in the hotel room with federal agents and 50 keys of cocaine. Pretty succinct fact pattern. My job is to defend this person. Even though he's my brother-in-law, is to defend him. Between you and I, I'd rather not defend him. I mean, he can go away, I really don't care. But again, that's where the attorney part comes in. I went to prison, I interviewed him. There's really no evidence that they, they're giving me like in discovery that I could use to defend him. So I have to go with the facts that I have. There was a day, there was a time, there was a rest, there was a hotel, there was him. There was a vehicle, uh, there's a police. That's about it. Under federal rules, there's usually like a small mini trial. Sometimes in front of a magistrate or a federal judge where they kind of go over the facts. You know, the state, the federal government in that case, puts their, their evidence forward. And um, the judge says, oh yeah, there's prima facie evidence to go forward. You go forward. Sometimes it's called a motion to suppress evidence, but this is what it's called. So that day came. Let's say it's tomorrow to me. It's simple. That day was tomorrow. Okay, so today, like five o'clock, end of my day, I still don't have anything in my back pocket. I can't think of a thing. I mean, I'm racking my brain. I mean, he was arrested, there was cocaine, there was a girl, there was a car. There was like a lot of cops, so. What the heck can you do? And in those moments of confusion, sometimes clarity pops up. And I remember my evidence class from law school. Specifically what I remember is that if there is a stamp from the county on a document, that document can be immediately included as evidence in court because it's recognized by the county where this federal court's at. And the county is recognized by the state and the government recognizes the state, so you know, it's reciprocal. It's not like, hey, I'm making this up. Or I'm drawing it out of freehand. This is important. So we begin the next day at the trial table. I'm sitting there with the, the doughboy, okay? I'm not gonna call him a doughboy, he wasn't that good, okay? The bag of uh, whatever boy. And the prosecutor pops up one, two, three, four, five witnesses. They, um, the agent sits at the room, get up and talk about how she walked in and she was dragging the suitcase. Uh, and uh, finally they made a deal for the amount and she opens it up. They arrest her, they test it, it's positive. I mean, they're going on and on and on. To you and I, who the hell cares, okay? I'm not here for her. So they arrest her, what do I care? My point of view is him. We're allowed to make a little opening statement, that kind of stuff, so I did. They said that these two went in and that he did some counter surveillance driving, like looking to see what everybody was watching him. And then he finally pulls up to the, the side door, uh, turned, he, she opens the door, looks across the way, the dome light lit up, they saw his face clearly in the vehicle, the truck popped open, she took out the seeker, she went upstairs, she got arrested, okay, all that stuff we know. But f first of all, it is the details you want to know. The details. I'm good at details. Let me tell you, I'm really good at details. I'm a pain in the ass when it comes to details. I decided, you know what? I want to know every detail. Because now, they're on the stand. Tell judge, this is what happened. In my opinion, testimony will show that he pulled up 
she exited, he left. He got a phone call. Hey, I need a ride. Sure. He picks her up, takes her there. She picks up the suitcase, she leaves. He had no idea what was in the suitcase. Now between you and I, do you know what was in the suitcase? I don't know what was in the suitcase. I never saw what was inside the suitcase. I never put it on the table, I have no idea. But most importantly, he didn't touch the suitcase, he didn't see the suitcase, he didn't lift up the suitcase. It had nothing to do with the suitcase. Okay, he takes his girl, which in theory happened to be his girlfriend, but anyway, he takes his girl to the destination, she gets arrested, yeah, that's on her. You take somebody to a party, you know, and they get pregnant, that's on them, that's not up to you. I mean, come on. And that was more or less my argument. And here we are in court, federal court. There's a big federal police behind me over there. <laughs> Let me tell you. A little intimidating, to tell you the truth. This was my first time having this kind of stuff in federal court. Now, my friend at the time was a, well, not, was a, yeah, he was a former assistant federal prosecutor. I told him what was happening. He says, Bobby, look, you're going to lose today, okay? Don't worry about it. Everybody loses those things because the government always proves everything. And if you had to go to trial and see what kind of deal you get. Call me tonight and tell me who the guy was there. And I may know him. We'll work out a deal for you guy. I got a loser of a case. I can't believe it, man. I'm a lawyer. I'm from New York. I don't have any loser cases. I got to win this puppy somehow. That's my dignity. He got me a little upset. Now, I'm not worried about the low life next to me. I'm worried about, I'm going to lose this? Is it a foregone conclusion? What kind of country are we in? So they put a couple of witnesses up, and the FBI agent so-and-so, nice guy. I mean, one of my friends is FBI. We went to law school together, and he testified about the girl. Any questions? Johnny, yeah. No questions. Second FBI agent. Testify, he had a microphone in the room. Any questions? I, I don't get any questions. And third FBI agent, man, they had a whole bunch of them upstairs. There's like 12 upstairs. Judge, let's, let's just cut to the chase. I don't know who they are. They have nothing to do with me or my client. I have no questions. Whatever they want to say, they can say it. I don't care. So far, nothing has been said that my client is guilty of anything. Got it? So, now it comes to a crucial part. The outside of the hotel. Ah, I'm interested in the outside. And they put this uh, cop, and he was the one out in the street. Uh, the federal police officer was in the street. There's three of them to block off the entrance and the exit, make sure traffic flow, and stop this car. So they stopped the car. I said, Judge, they stopped the car. They can stop any car they want. It has nothing to do with my client. That just shows that he pulled in, and on the way out, they arrested him. I said, The key witness here is a cop. I saw him in the car. Let's go to that. Judge said, yeah, let's go to that. So police officer takes a stand. Now, let me tell you, there's great police officers, because I'll tell you, I'm family with police officers, I love the police officers, I get in trouble, I'm gonna call the police. This guy, yeah. This guy uh, was at a bad day, okay? And he was facing me. He was going to have a worse day. But I remember my father, who when he began questioning me, I hated it. Because at the end, he was going to win. And he was always innocent questions to begin with. And at the end, damn, he caught me. <laughs> so first thing is, let him talk. Remember I told you, if you get arrested, don't talk. When a cop gets on the stand, you know what you do? You let them talk. But what is it going to say? You let them talk. Let them talk, 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 talk. Because this part turns blue in the face. Let them talk and talk and talk. And you just take it in. They can spin whatever kind of web they want. But you got a pen, you got a pad, you're writing your stuff down. And nobody's that good. Nobody's that good. So he's done talking. I saw the car do counter surveillance driving. I don't know what the hell that is. Then he pulls up to the doorway. After some time, the passenger's door opens up. He looks in my direction. The dome light was lit. I saw his face. She closed the door. The truck popped 
the, the trunk pops open, she takes out the bag, she goes to the hotel. That's what his testimony was. Just calls me up and I had that, that really stupid look like, that's pretty good. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. You must have been about like three or four or five hundred feet away from this kid, right? With like binoculars and cameras and stuff. He says, no. I was parked within 20 feet of him. There's a massive parking lot. I was parking one of the spots. I was looking forward in the car. I saw everything right at the window. This is like my cousin Vinny, basically. What kind of car do you have? He tells me, hey, your window was tinted? He goes, only in the back and the side, never in the front. Oh. So, he pulls up, yeah. But he does counter surveillance? What, what is that? He explains that he drove around and around and around and around and that crap. But he stopped, he waited a while. She opens the door, exit the vehicle. Dome light goes on. He looks over, the guy can see his face. That's how he recognizes that man, that chair next to you, Dumbo. It's too neat. It's too clean. Hold on. Your Honor, yeah, we just reviewed the arrest form that had just been handed for the first time. Oh. So, Officer, uh, I'm not going to tell the exact truth. Uh, and what time did this happen? Approximately. It's around noontime. Noontime. And you saw his face. This guy's face, when the door opened, the only one I saw that face yet. Are you how far from his vehicle? I mean, that close? And that's gotta be. <laughs> you got him dead to rights then. He says, yes, sir, I start right there, yeah. You know, Your Honor, uh, we got a couple hours ago, and uh, I've been handed some evidence, not much. I'd like to review it. We could take like a, maybe a half hour break, whatever, come back after lunch. Uh, I don't see where I could ask a lot of questions, but but I'd like to ask some questions, if I may. Judge was a good mood. All right. Good idea, Ms. Sanchez. We'll break to 115. Make it up. Everybody leaves. You don't go anywhere. <laughs> you stay right there, buddy. You stay right there. I began to look through this crap they gave me. My daughter's applying to college. Colleges. I know that my son applied to 25 law schools. He got into, oh, he applied to 26 law schools, accepted by 25. I would say, how about plan B? He had plan A, B, C. I had a plan too. This was my plan right here. I wasn't gonna tell him about it because it didn't go good. <laughs> Remember, he goes away, what the heck do I care? That, that's always in the back of my mind too, okay? But I'm gonna wait. Had about an hour and 15 minutes. I read a lot of stuff. And then, I figured I'm gonna set the trap. Yeah, you set a trap. Doesn't mean you're gonna catch anybody. You go fishing, doesn't mean you're gonna come home with your fish. You go hunting, doesn't mean you get a game. But I'm gonna set the trap. It's amazing how many times people fall for traps. 
It's amazing. I can't make it. It's 15 minutes already. And they say uh, you can't go 15 minutes. People don't like that stuff. So, But we'll do one more part, and I promise you, we'll wrap it up. But it's time to set the trap, folks. Let's see who gets caught. Uh, I'll see you in a few minutes. I'm going to get a little coffee break, I think, or any other kind of break. <laughs>